Chapter 30, Mushrooms and Consciousness It was late in the night when I first heard the crow caw. The terrible screech erupted in my mind when the pain reverberated through my skull like a splinter being pressed into my brain. I needed more palazepram quick, but Hammond's fingers couldn't find a fresh supply in the bag labeled Quality Drugs. All we'd come across were sealed bags of fresh green flower buds, heavy white bricks, and an arrangement of orange pill bottles. It was dealer's choice, but then that damn crow cried out again. Ah, oh, stop, mercy, please! T. Hammond took the body out of the control room and into the hallway in search of the blood-shrieking cry. But there was no crow to be found. Each cry sent an echo rippling through my mind as it became more conscious of the situation. Ma's voice was gone, nowhere to be found, and these halls were too dark to find a bird looming around. I turned to go back before I heard the crow cry out again. It brought me to my knees. Prisoners screamed while terror videos echoed as my brain split in two. My hands pressed against T. Hammond's temples as if his brain might burst at any moment. We were running dry on the inside, and even Ma was losing hope. I can't take it anymore, yelled Levi's voice. I collapsed beside his door when I heard my dearest brother cry out. Curled in a fetal position, I pressed my ear to the floor. I'm going crazy, said Levi. I'm losing my mind, and my ribs are broken. I'm... I, I, I need out, said Manuka. How does it stop? I need it to stop. Hearing her sister propelled Hammond's legs against the walls, which shot her body across the floor to her door. What do I do? What do I do? She begged. I can't get out. I'm going. Stay calm, yelled Otto. It works off the mind. Stay calm. They were all here together. Otto was right beside Manuka's cell when I opened my mouth. But don't you dare say a word. Don't you dare. Hammond's fingers were reaching for the gap beneath the door, but I was holding my breath about to crack. Otto, yelled Levi. Otto, are you there? Silence hung from the walls before I felt Otto's voice respond. I am. He was defeated, and all that was left was the sound of the hopeless truth when I heard the crow lurking about. The wings fluttered near my brain as I began to ache from the thought of it coming back again. Everything keeps changing. It's changing again, said Manuka. The drugs they gave us are getting worse. Noise flooded under the cell doors all around me. Traitors, Levi screamed. The crow cawed and the shriek sent my hands over my ears. My arms were squeezing the space around my head as it pried my brain apart. As if an alarm was bursting, the crow wouldn't stop. Enough, enough. T. Hammond's head was going to pop. They turned their own people into slaves, yelled Levi. They're all slaves. Someone had to do something. And now we're dead because of you, screamed Otto. We're all dead now. I was going to fix it, but you started a riot? We said no violence. Look what happened. Levi paused. I was trying to save us. We weren't going anywhere working as their slaves. I don't care what you tried to do. We're all dead now, yelled Otto. But you saw them change, said Manuka. Once Levi stood up against them, the slaves did too. When we rose up against the soldiers, it reminded the slaves how to. A tear ran down the bridge of my nose and fell near the door crack. It was as close as I could get to my sister when the crow flew off and left my body limp against the door. The space was sacred around these three, but not for a sinner like me. Oh no, especially not for T. Hammond or I. Dejected and alone, I rose to my feet and ran us back to the control room as the whimpering continued on. Now the damn crow was coming again, and even I was ready to die. I got to the room, but all I saw were more screens. T. Hammond was losing his grip, so we started pacing when the mania in our mind began to chatter and yell. Somewhere, someone could help us, but these voices were too obnoxious, not giving us a second to think. Oh, how could she? Has Ma damned us to hell? Oh, no, not I. Please, not me. You can take T. Hammond's body, but dear God, not me. I knew I was the one stuck behind this mask, and it was T. Hammond's fault for the panic. I lifted his face off from mine. I took a breath in when I heard Ma speak. We can wait. Wait and see. Breathing on my own, I stared down at the copper mask when a cold chill ran down my neck. I remembered who I was, and I wondered if Eval knew too. Then I heard a camera zoom in from the corner when I slid T. Hammond's head back over mine. The crow began to caw, and I allowed the pain to rivet through my bones. Oh, I was as still as a ghost. Oh, they'd seen the back of my head, but how in the world could they explain that I was already dead? Even this pain was too great, and the release button was right there. Then I looked down and saw an opossum on the screen. Wait, what? I bet the mushrooms know the way, whispered a familiar voice. An opossum shot across the doorway. I heard its paws skid on by. It took the time to taunt me with a message under the door, so I followed his body and sprinted down the halls. This creature was moving fast, 
but I could still see him because his head was all white. Chasing after it, my brain continued to pound, but I knew the crow was hiding somewhere too, even if this opossum hadn't made a sound. I chased him everywhere, down every nook and cranny on this floor. Then the creature and I were alone when it stopped beside the giant brass door. I've got you now, sucker, I told it. You're going to stay right there. The opossum stayed low. Oh, maybe this was a game. Its eyes were peering at me when my eye did the same. I blinked once, and then the creature began to walk. It came right up next to me when the opossum began to talk. Did you hear me? I said the mushrooms know the way, said the opossum. What? Which way? I could hear his voice with my very own ears, as if an electric blanket was glowing over my skin. I felt as light as a feather, even with my brain pounding. Now the opossum's glowing light pulsated out from within. Like a radio searching for a signal, my third eye caught this creature's light. Observing as I did best, I watched my third eye gain sight. He passed beside me, and so I followed behind him quick. This opossum's light was the healing kind, and now my body wasn't feeling quite so sick. Whatever was happening, this light held a cure. Now the opossum stopped beside the control room and pointed right there. We entered the room when he jumped on the back table. Ah, there you are, said Sistro. These mushrooms will make you feel much more stable. My hand came out from the bag labeled quality drugs before I found ten bottles filled with the psilocybin mushrooms. Cheers to breakfast, lunch, and dinner, said Cicero. Well, I'd been hungry all day, and I was quite curious about what this opossum had to say. Then I heard Mao whisper, Enjoy the mushrooms, my dear. My earth made them that way. <laughs>